out of all the state managers in React, which are a lot, I did not expect React Query to become one of my favorites. The two approaches you're about to see solve the same problem of building a shopping cart for an e-commerce application. But the second one you're gonna see is so much nicer. This is the store I'm gonna use to demonstrate the two different approaches. And we only have two goals for this. First off, we want to get the shopping cart information from an API. And secondly, we want to allow for refreshing of the cart's contents. So that means when I add something to the cart, you want to refresh the cart content and actually show the products inside of the cart. That's the only goal. It's pretty straightforward. And now for the two approaches to achieve this. One is not so nice and the other one is definitely nicer. Check out the not so nice one. So what we're gonna do is define something called a use cart where we are gonna use Zustand, a state management tool along with fetch. And we want two things in here, the cart and then a method to refresh the cart, which is an asynchronous function we can call with a try catch block inside. This is important to properly handle errors later, where we are going to log fetching cart and then perform a request to our API to get the cart content that we are then going to set as this state right up here. And then we're going to catch an error. And for now, we're just going to log an error that we had something wrong here. And that's all the logic, right? We could assume this works. If I save this and then try to use this in the add to cart button, don't worry about all the other stuff. The important stuff is just this right here, the refresh card. We can see hmm, we have a TypeScript error, property refresh card does not exist on type unknown. So what's the problem here? After all, we defined both methods that we need. But for this approach to also work with Zustand, we explicitly need to pass the type in. In the other approach, that is something we don't have to worry about. And then once we explicitly pass the type as a generic after the create, we can see it works just fine. The arrows are now gone and we can use this just normally as we would. But I think the second approach you're gonna like way more because it is much cleaner. And what I didn't know before is how powerful a state management tool React query actually is. So let's import two things. Just like in the other one, we also imported two things and then export a hook called use card. And this hook will encapsulate the same logic, but in a much nicer way where we can destructure the data and the refetch we get from React query and just change the name on them to match the other one with a query key that is meant for caching. If this key changes, the data will automatically be refetched, something we don't need right now. And then the query function, which will encapsulate the same logic as we had in the fetch approach earlier with a fetch request to our API with no cache. So it's always not stale and returning that into the data. So we can actually make it usable as the card constant that we're defining up here. And then lastly, we just want to return the card and the refresh card. And if I now go into the store and click add to card, it works the same way, but in a much cleaner fashion. And that is because React Query allows us to handle all the details under the hood cache time, stale time, initial data, pagination, and so on and so on. It's all already built in, in this pretty good state management solution that I wasn't aware of. Whereas if we go to the not so nice implementation where we're just working with fetch and Zustand, they're great tools on their own. The fetch, for example, because we have very precise control over caching, no store. We could force cache if we wanted to. And then Zustand is an awesome state management solution on its own, but together they're not really good. And now there's one really cool other solution we can do, and that is directly return the use query. And that eliminates all the need for custom naming and also allows us wherever we call this hook to destructure everything that React query allows us by default. But we don't declare this in individual components. Instead, we declare it once and that is in a separate file where we can reuse it across the entire application everywhere we call it. Like here, for example, and we can also do it here. Now the data is named cart. We can't choose the custom naming in this approach, but how clean is that. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I just found this really cool and wanted to share it with you and I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you liked the video, give a like and then I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.